Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Board Show right here on Smash FM here on a Thursday here in Melbourne. And of course, let's go across to our friends over in WA and talk to one of my favourite teams over there, and that is East Fremantle, of course, two-time defending champions uh, in the women's competition over there. And of course, we got our one of our favourite players over there as well. Of course, her name's Ash. She joins us from Perth. Thanks, uh, Ash, for joining us. No worries. Love to be doing this for a third time. Third time, I think. Yep. It's bloody great. Um, pretty different year. Uh, normally, this time of year, I would normally be interviewing you about how the season's going. Um, but obviously, that's been postponed to later this month, uh, which obviously it's starting pretty soon. Number one, how exciting is that to actually have a season? Uh, and number two, is it going to feel a bit weird even though, yes, you are the defending champions, but is it is this year going to be treated a little bit more differently for the fact that obviously I'm assuming there's going to be a short amount of games? Yeah, it was, it was definitely hard at the start because we did solid pre-season and we had so many new girls come down and then it was, sorry, training's been postponed until further notice. So it was sort of put on the back foot. A lot of us tried to get together, obviously in the, I think it was groups of, tens at that stage so we're trying to still do running but by the stage I think it was two it got to two people stage one whatever it was yeah it was just hard it was hard to try and stay motivated but I think we well once we found out that there was possibly going to be a season that was a lot better a lot of us started to get more around it actually more excited I reckon the girls are like everyone's such good spirits this year which is amazing but I think we've definitely got a target on our backs having double premierships but I don't know it it should be good we haven't really changed too much but we have at the same time not to give too much away but all right we're in for a good season we're in for a good season now you might as well tell us um, I'm assuming the fixtures are already out at the moment um, for the season start. No, nah, not yet. Oh. Not yet. Unfo- yeah, unfortunately, apparently the Waffle are trying to get it out by the end of this week. So hopefully tomorrow or early next week. Because I think we start in 16 days. Okay, yep. Yeah, I think 16 days. So, hope. yeah, hopefully we get it soon. Um, I guess, do you know approximately how many games you've got to have this year? I think it was eight. I think eight. I think we're going to plan to try and finish at the end of September. Um, End of September, I think, was the main goal that they were trying to get. um, I guess, how has the um, morale been like at the club now that you've gone back to, I'm assuming, full contact training and, and... Yeah, back to normal. Yeah, getting ready for the season. How How's the morale like around the team? Yeah, it's good. I think it's like out of the six years that have been there, I think this is probably the biggest hype that we've had. I think because we had such a big break, we went from pre-season to nothing, not knowing if it was going to happen to there is going to be seasons. But I think everyone is just, everyone's in a good mood. Everyone's getting around each other. We all get dinners together. Yeah, it's really, really good. I reckon, like I said, I reckon it's the best that we've had since I've been in at the club, and I think it's been six, seven years now. So, what has the team learned from being in isolation in lockdown? Uh, firstly, and then, um, and obviously now being on the other side of um, this lockdown. Um, how, firstly, how tough was it, and what was it like uh, in regards to the team side of things? Did you do any online training? And now do, going back to normal, full training, contact, getting ready for the season that starts in 16 days. Yeah, so Webbo or Nikki Harwood, our head lead coach, and Chris Bully, I think is us. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, they got us pretty much on Skype calls or Zoom calls and pretty much gave us all the rundown, what was going to happen for the season, if it was going to go ahead. Um, went through a lot of tactics, strategies, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was hard. It was hard to try and get people 
to stay as committed as what we tried. I think I'm, I think with the way everyone's come back after that break, I think we've got a good season coming up. Now, obviously uh, winning two premierships already, one in the, particularly the old competition, which was the first one, um, yep. two years ago, and obviously last year in the new competition, um, which is obviously currently the revamp one. Um, I guess, I know it's going to be a silly question to ask, but which one's more special? Definitely, oh, it's, I'm definitely the one last year, just because that was the first year of the waffle. Like we, we've won the first ever grand final of that season. So it was pretty special, but I think personally for me, I think it was two years ago, grand final, first grand, like first premiership I won at a waffle club. So that was pretty, pretty good. Pretty special feeling. Now, uh, I guess going to this year, I know you don't want to give too, not too much away, especially to your rivals in Swan District. So it's become a huge rivalry now over there um, because I know it used to be Subiaco Swans. Now it's becoming East Brio and Swans. Um, I guess I have to ask, um, I guess, have you managed to recruit any new players or any of the youth players that, or Rogers Cup players coming up to the senior team this year? Yeah, we actually have. It wasn't even, we never ever reach out, but it's incredible to see the numbers, even in our reserve side. We've had this influx of players, which is incredible because women's footy, when I was in youth girls or the Rogers Cup, we would struggle to even get 13 a team. And now I think youth girls are getting 30, 40 girls to a training we're getting this huge influx, even in resis and league. So it's like, it's, it is really good, but yeah, we've got some girls from other teams, their choice, their choice, of course, but looking forward to see how they go. Looking for they're, they're super sweet. Love them. Now, obviously you mentioned before we came uh, on air, obviously one of my other favorite players at East Brio, obviously Bree Green, who's out injured. Um, Yep. How is she travelling and will we see her back on the field when the season starts or at any stage when the season starts? Yeah, no, Bree's good or we call her legs, but she's, yeah, she's in good spirits. She trained with the Eagles last year for their first season, but I think injury still held her back. But she's an incredible player, incredible person too. I just... I think because I grew up with her being my coach to then playing with her at a state carnival to then playing at East Ferry with her. I just want to see her back out there because having her out there, it's a different feeling, good feeling. Now, for anyone that misses the last two interviews that we've done, um, I have to ask, when did you get involved in footy and why did you choose it? When did I? Well, I started in Auskick. So I think that's the same as in Victoria. So I started as a kid and then obviously you get to a point, I think when you turn 12 and you, you can't go any further, or well, back then you couldn't go any further. So you had to choose netball or soccer and silly me, I picked both. So woke up very early, both weekend days, but then eventually went, got to high school, year seven, little year seven, went to the head of sport and said, oh, I want to try out for the footy team. And it was open girls, which is from year 10 to 12. And I didn't realise. And he's like, oh, nah, might be a bit hard. And I was like, oh, nah, give me a go. And then a former Frio, well, not former, she plays at the Frio Dockers now, Gabby O'Sullivan. I think she would have been year 12 or 11 and I was year seven. But yeah, it started there. And then I had... The All Saints coach, Oliver Bees, he came up to me and asked if I wanted to try out for a state under-16s team. I didn't even know it was a thing. I didn't even know footy. I thought it was just a school competition. And then, yeah, just went from there and there. But it's been – I love footy. I'm so happy I chose it over soccer in the end. Yes, good choice. I, I agree on that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, we've – 
pretty much highlighted what your highlight would be for your footy journey, which is obviously two, two straight premierships back to back with East Freo. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to move on to the next question, which is mm -hmm. um, what does footy mean to you now, and especially being there at East Freo? Um, it means a lot. Like it's, it gives you this buzz. I don't know how to explain it, but it just makes me so happy. And I think down at East Freo, we're literally like a family. We go down there, the culture's good. Everyone's around each other. Like I said before, like we go for dinners, catch up outside of the trainings, all that kind of stuff. And two years ago, I had some pretty hard mental health struggles and they, they were incredible. They helped me through it, especially Webbo or Nikki Harwood. She helped me out heaps and heaps and heaps. And Caitlin Edwards, a couple of those girls. But it's I think it's more than a club. Like, we're such a big family club as well. All the players, the coaches, kids come down. We're, yeah, it's just an incredible place to be. Makes me so happy. Just see, I, love, I just smile. It's such a good club. So happy there. Now... Obviously, you've achieved so much already in footy. Do you have like any short or long term goals that you want to reach? And obviously, win a premiership again for the third. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that would be wicked. I mean, I think short term goal, probably for a club, would definitely be, I guess, long term would be eventually to get to the grand final and win in such a short season. It's weird to say, but. Um, I think that would definitely be like the club's goal. But at the same time, like we don't focus on getting to that point. We just focus on week in, week out, what's going to happen. Um, I think individually, I just want to be the best player I can be at the club. Like whether the younger girls look up to us, that would be huge. But yeah, I just really want to um, develop the skills that I've got and just keep working on them. Be the best player at East Frio. And I, I guess long-term for me would eventually be AFL. But at the moment, my biggest goal is just to be the best player at East Freo that I can be. Now, obviously, East Freo is pretty lucky. Um, and watching them, not just watching you play on grand final day the last two years, and also to see the rise of where the team's now at a couple of years ago um, in that grand final against Swans a couple of years ago. Um, but the way that... Um, the players to conduct themselves, not just from the um, the waffle side of thing, but obviously into AFLW, which obviously Frio uh, Dockers well, technically won the premiership um, this year. Um, because obviously they went through the whole year. Technically. Um, and obviously most of them are at East Frio. Um, I guess for you playing alongside those players, how I guess do you pinch yourself and like, how lucky am I to be playing alongside these amazing AFLW players? Yeah, like sometimes I think you almost forget who you're playing with. Like my family members, even some of my mates go, oh, like, do you know so-and-so? And you're like, oh, yeah, like I'll see her on Wednesday. I'll see her on Friday at training. <laughs> like it's, it's a surreal feeling sometimes. Like, like I said, I think you just forget that you're actually playing with these players. But at the same time when they come down to East Frio, they don't act. They don't act like, you know, I don't know how to word it, but they don't act as if oh, I'm AFL, so I don't need to be here. They mingle with everyone. Like I said before, East Frio, we're all just so close. So it's good to have them down. They teach us all something new every single training, which is good. Now, what would be your advice to our listeners out there, um, especially interstate and especially in WA, um, that should get involved in footy? Just give it a go. I mean, you don't know until you try something, but it's one of the fastest growing women's sport, I think. I'm fairly certain with the way it's been going, but it's, it's so enjoyable. Even if you don't want to be at that top tier, there's so many other ranks that you can be. I think there's amateurs up to... D division, I think. But yeah, you just give it a go. It's worth it. Make heaps friends along the way. It's good. Now, I have to, I have to ask. Um, I know this is going to sound a really silly question to ask, but out of the two premiership wins that you had, um, how many of those players 
would have been part of the 2016 grand final loss uh, that are still with the team oh. now. God, um, I think well, most of them would be AFLW girls now. I think there might be a handful maybe. Or, oh, God, it's so hard to say. But yeah, there's quite, we have so many new girls each year, it keeps changing. But I think I'd say about five to 10, I reckon. And because the reason I asked that question is, I guess, how special to sort of still keep that core um, players from that grand final loss uh, a couple of years ago with the success that you have managed to get the last two years? Yeah, I think it's. I mean, even though there's only still a few girls that are playing with us that were from that team, it's each year I think we've been so fortunate and lucky to have girls that are eager to learn and eager to listen and learn from our mistakes from that grand final. So each year we've gone in and taught all the new girls what what to do in a way. And I feel like having the AFL girls back then, even though there wasn't really an AFL competition, but they still come, like they come down to every single training. We still hurt from that loss, <laughs> but no, nah, they, it's, we've still got a core group, but I feel like each year that same core group is growing and growing because all the players that are coming down, like I said, are so eager to learn. Now, let's finish on a couple of lighthearted questions about your team. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> First question I'm going to ask, any embarrassing moments um, so far in pre-season slash post-COVID training? I guarantee once, once we hang up after this, I'll, it'll, everything will come to me. But nah, no, nothing that I can think of. Now, I'm assuming um, your team would have done some challenges, as you mentioned um, at the start. Have we, have, is there any players that, you know, have now discovered some hidden talents? Oh. No, I don't. You know, we're getting together for dinner tomorrow night, so I'll definitely, I'll definitely find this out. And then on our fourth interview, I'll let you know. Okay, <laughs> keep me posted. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you posted with our merch. Yeah, correct. Uh, now, it, I know, I know. I think I might have an idea based on all the un- all the other interviews I've done with Ace Freo with my <laughs> three questions. Um, who's the comedian in the team this year? Having Ruby Slicer back, she's definitely, <laughs> de- de- definitely. The, one of the funniest people I know. Been so lucky to know her for so long. That it's, it's, so, it's good to have her back from Melbourne. She's definitely one of the funniest people. Yeah, I, I, thought, I, thought, that, I thought that was going to be that. <laughs> um, any best singers in the team? Well, Sharon Wong, for <laughs> sure. She's in, like, she is incredible. Uh, best dancers in the team? Larry, Larry, Larissa Versace, 100%. Best dancer ever. Who, are, who has the best personality? Actually, to be fair, we've had two girls come from Broome, Kelly and Karen. They're, yeah, they're incredible people. They, yeah, they're good people. Love having them down. They've, they have two little girls as well. And they're just, like I said, family club. Love having them down. Kids are cuties too. <laughs> Maybe next for East Freo Sharks players? Yeah, 100%. They have to be. <laughs> we'll buy them a pair of boots. <laughs> Let's, let, can't wait to see how they go. Oh, and, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> now, of course, I'll finish up with these last two questions, which is... Um, you know, for consume, we've got all our local footy over here, and even our state footy competition is completely cancelled for the year. Um, um, what would be your advice to our 
Melbourne listeners uh, or viewers that, should, you know, from the from a distance should follow the Mighty Sharks. Yeah, keep up to date with us. We have a Facebook page, East Fremantle Football Club. Definitely get around that. Um, even if you make some kind of pledge and come over to WA, quarantine for two weeks, join the East Fremantle Sharks, definitely worth it. Um, we actually had one a Melbourne girl come over last year, Carly Tapner, one of our best mates now, but she's moved back. But definitely, definitely take a leaf out of her book and come over for a season. Try it out. And, of course, I'll finish off with this one last one. And this is going to be based off last year. Um, well actually, maybe the last two years. Tell us a bit about the... Um, Obviously, we're in a premiership. There's going to be loads of celebrations um, back at the club or <laughs> Mad Monday. Yep. <laughs> Tell us, there must be some stories that's come out of those celebrations or uh, from the last two years that, that uh, hopefully you're willing to share with us. Yeah, there, there's quite a lot. There is quite a lot. <laughs> but I think, think those cele- celebratory... I don't know how to word it. All those <laughs> celebrations should be kept on the down low. <laughs> should be kept on the down low. <laughs> we, we, we enjoy it a little bit more than what we probably should. But it's good. Well, I guess I guess I'll have to go over there and find out for myself, I guess. Um... Yeah, come over in September when the borders open. And hopefully we're in the grand final. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, well, Ash, thank you so much for joining us. It's awesome having you on the show. As I said, it's our favourite player uh, over there in WA and obviously uh, one of our favourite teams in East Frere. Can't wait to, uh, you know, don the blue and white um, of East Frere. I'll, um, send it, I'll, I'll send the merch over and you can, we'll beat swans to it. Correct. Uh, well, obviously, for our listeners out there, we're having a battle between East France and ones who, who's going to get the merch to me first. Uh, so, but, uh, <laughs> so, well, but, Ash, thanks so much for joining us. Please send our best wishes to your teammates. We are right behind the Sharks, and uh, let's hope you can go all the way and uh, win it for a third time in a row and uh, create a bit of a dynasty uh, over there at the, at the Shark Tank. No worries. Thank you very much for having me, and I'll pass a message on to the girls. No worries. And that's actually there, of course, two time, of course, uh, Premiership player from East Freo. Of course, make sure you get involved there. Of course, all the details will post on our uh, social media, of course, on how you can get involved with the East Freo uh, Football Club, of course, especially to uh, be part of the uh, women's program there. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Thursday edition. <laughs>